Good afternoon. Today we're doing another of these vlog entries and today we're going to look at the history of MG and Rover and why I like them so much. So one of the things about MG and Rover is of course their uh, marks that are synonymous with Britain and British culture and in order to tell you more about them we'll have to go back about 50 years. So MG and Rover were both formed as um, companies um, in the 19th and 20th century um, but by 1968 they became part of uh, a very large conglomerate called British Leyland which was formed by the merger of the British Motor Holdings and uh, the Leyland Corporation. This has to be one of the worst things that ever happened in the British motor industry. There were essentially all the different companies that had built cars and lorries and buses in Britain all merged together. It was very confusing. The um, industrial relations were terrible. And by 1975, only seven years after the merger, the government decided to nationalise the whole thing. And it didn't really make any difference whatsoever. So after the mess of British Leyland, um, the government decided to change its name eventually in the 80s to the Austin Rover Group and they killed off most of the brands they had, really leaving um, after that Rover and MG and decided to sell off most of the other companies that they had. For a long time they were looking for a buyer for um, what remained of British Leyland and in 1988 they managed to sell this to British Aerospace who um, didn't really know much about making cars but they at least returned whatever was left to some kind of profitability. It wasn't long though before things went wrong again in 1995 BMW bought what was left of um, Rover, MG and Land Rover. A lot of people said this was an awful decision again because by 2000 um, everything had gone wrong, BMW were losing millions of pounds and um, they had to sell it eventually to a management buyout for £10 and these people were known as the Phoenix Consortium. The Phoenix Consortium managed the company again really badly. They, instead of improving the designs and updating them, decided to go motor racing and introduce a sports car for about £80,000 called the MGX Power SV which again were terrible mistakes and by April 2005 the whole company went under. What was left of the company was bought um, in the June 2005 by two uh, Chinese firms, Nanjing Automotive and Shanghai Automotive, and they later merged um, and got rid of the Rover brand, which they didn't even own, um, and relaunched MG in Britain in 2008. The relaunch in 2008 wasn't of any new models though, it was just the MGTF sports car which had been in production since 1995 as the MGF. And so in 2011 when they really introduced a new model, the press and public alike were waiting with bated breath to see what would happen. The first car they introduced in 2011 was called the MG6 and it was an absolute sales disaster. It was very poorly made on the inside and uh, although it was a cheap car, it was very well priced. It was also um, ridiculed for um, just not being a competitive product in a very crowded and demanding market. The second car that they launched um, was in 2013, it's called the MG3 and I'm sitting on right now, you can watch my review of it. Really um, these days MGs and Rovers, both new and second hand, um, obviously you can't buy a new Rover anymore but you can buy a new MG, they're very very good value for money but they don't possibly have the best sort of quality reputation. I like them because they're British and they have a sense of um, sort of fun about them, they generally have good handling, um, they have good levels of comfort and they do represent very good value for money. Also um, they have a sort of special factor about them. In the case of the Rover they have bit of bits of words and um, they have really comfy seats and they, they drive a lot better than people would think. In the case of the MG they're quite sporty cars and the, the MG3 in particular is a really really good value money car. 
So I hope you enjoyed a bit of that, a bit of look at the reasons why I like MGs and Rovers and also a little um, delve into the rather tortuous history um, that the MG and Rover brands have had in the last 50 years. So um, I hope that you um, will be watching the channel again. And um, if you do wish for me to source a car, it doesn't have to be an MG or a Rover, of course, um, maybe something a bit more sensible, then don't hesitate to get in touch. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you very much indeed.